Hey guys, and welcome to Real Talk Number One. I'm your host Jacob, and my co-host Jared. And this is our first ever guest. He is my little brother Tom. Hey, good day. Hello. And he almost ruined our intro by giggling through the entire thing, so that was nice. You can't see Jared's face, but honestly, he was trying not to laugh also. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's fair. Um, so I think we'll start off today's today's topic by saying uh, the Detective Pikachu trailer, which is a, a good trailer, just all around, and it it looks fantastic. Fantastic. So I actually haven't seen this trailer yet, so your description is sort of going to be the first look at Detective Pikachu. All I know is that it's it's Ryan Reynolds, Mr. Deadpool, playing Detective Pikachu, so I'm excited for it anyway. Have but, you seen? Uh, have you seen, seen any of the animation techniques? Anything that you you haven't seen the uh, the new CGI realistic looking Pokemon? No, none at all. That is that is. Very, very interesting. So how do they go? Is it po- Pokemon S? Does it look like Pokemon? It, it, they look, they nice. look like the creepy pasta drawings of the Pokemon <laughs> from back in the day. Yeah, they, yeah. they look uh, ultra realistic. Yeah. So, so it's, it's actually kind of, it's actually kind of scary, like how good that they look. Yeah. Like if you grew up watching Pokemon, yeah, yeah, then this is the kind of movie that would be like, oh my god, this looks fantastic. Oh really? So it's yeah. really like good quality. Yeah. So like, what's what's the setup? Is it like humans and Pokemon, kind of like it, Happy it Time is, It is. Like it is a setup? little. It is a little bit like that. Well, obviously, it's, I'm um, hoping good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is almost like they they've made a, a fully live action Pokemon world set in like a gritty sort of Detroit esque. Yeah. Uh, buddy cop style movie. Oh yeah, nice. Like nice. like picture sort of I guess Rush Hour except Jackie Chan is Pikachu. And in like. And I'm saying this as I'm saying this super hetero uh, super heterosexual. It is so goddamn cute. Everything about it just screams cute. Is is I don't know why you heterosexual. I don't know why you point out heterosexual considering these things don't exist. I'm saying that. I mean, no, neither think, neither do tentacles, and you you you're saying how the Japanese treat that. <laughs> All right, All right. <laughs> we should leave that alone. That's, <laughs> that's for that's, that's for. That's, that's, that's an X-rated on. podcast. Yeah, that's for a, that's for an R-rated midnight uh, <laughs> my private stream. Yeah, rail it. talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess um, with the uh, the Detective Pikachu trailer having dropped and it looking fantastic, do we think this is the uh, the opening of the floodgates, so to speak, and that uh, now at long last we will be receiving good video game adaptations? You know um, what? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think it will be because we've had a plethora of crap. I think I think this is going to be the first one that is going to be good, and I'm actually looking forward to it. So that being said, I look forward to uh, Assassin's Creed as well, and that kind of let me down. But so, I've got my hopes up for this. I I agree that this is probably going to be good because especially if they can sort of use similar. Classic Ryan Reynolds style of comedy, which yeah. is just, it appeals to most adults. Um, but I don't know that we're going to get, I don't think this is a floodgate opening yet. I don't. Generally, just because this is a big risk, because Pokemon is notoriously aimed at your, your younger audience. Yeah. This is a very adult style, so if it, if it doesn't work... This movie, which I'm hoping it does, I'm hoping that if it doesn't work, it could just absolutely shut down any future video game style movies. Yeah. This, but we'll see. The thing is with Detective Pikachu, because this was also Detective Pikachu was also a it was it was also a graphic novel as well, and I've never read it, but like I've seen, but from what I've heard about the graphic novel is that it was a very like it was Pikachu like the dark side of Pikachu. Mm. It was like, but it was still funny like. Yeah, like yeah, a Pikachu yeah. is a very cute character. Yeah. Imagine him sure. as the bad cop in an interrogation. Yeah, it, yeah, it is something oddly hilarious about that. But I think with this movie, and then there was then the video game this as well, and that was really cute. But that was like PG. I think this is going to be like this is going to be like a mixture of the two. Okay. Do you think alternatively, Jacob? This one's I'm more so at you because I want to watch this movie with you. Do you think it's going to be? Deadpool-esque, and do you think it's going to hit all the marks Deadpool kind of hit? I think that it will. Based entirely on the the amount of work that Ryan Reynolds himself has put into making this film, yeah. it is 
it is it's Shades of Deadpool. It's a passion project for him, and Deadpool worked. Deadpool two was just as, as good. good. I would say just as good. I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as saying better, but definitely as good. Yeah. But it it just shows that when he puts his mind to it, and he decides that this needs a decent adaptation that he'll he'll fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's mm. it's the Conker's Bad Fur Day of Pokemon movies. Yes, yeah. it's, it's it looks yeah. it looks like it's for kids. It's it's not. Yeah, in saying that though, um, feel free to take your. Ch- I'm joking. Don't take your kids. <laughs> it's probably going to be MA, possibly. R. I I would definitely be waiting for the the ratings to come out. I would say it would sit firmly at. I would. PG to M. I think it's going to be PG. I, I would say it'd be PG. I can't see them doing the uh, the sweary. I can't. I can't see Pokemon, the Pokemon Company, or Niantic, or Nintendo, or anyone letting what is essentially their their biggest kid friendly money maker at the moment yeah. be turned into a a smuff film. Yeah. Yeah, but like, it'd be funny though. It would be funny, <laughs> and and I'll turn I, it I, I'm gonna. It's okay if it's a funny smuff. Yeah, here's me playing devil's advocate. Could be though. Could be. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean it, it could be. That, that's a hundred percent too. You could also you could um you could turn Mario into a, a hitman game, but I don't think you should. <laughs> <laughs> He's already that got the plumbers awesome. out. So. I mean, yeah, that's true. I guess uh, he at least yeah he, he just started dumping bodies in the sewer, which kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah. This got off. That's got dark quick, didn't it? <laughs> got off uh, topic. Shout out, uh, shout out to uh, Damon Harmon. Are we, are we allowed to mention them yet? Yeah, fucking yeah. That's I mean, that's no, <laughs> that's that's true. Uh, uh, on on the uh, on the note of great great video games, uh, what do you if, if you could pick a video game to be adapted into a movie, what would it be? No, oh, fudge. You go first. Uh, yeah, Jared. Like Jared, do you, you want to yeah. take this one? Uh, uh, mine is definitely going to be Halo. Halo. Yeah. It's got to be Halo. Uh, is it just because you want to see the armor in, in real time? Yep. Yeah. That is exactly that why. would be amazing. I, uh, mean, would you... there's, I mean, the, the story in the video game is fantastic. I mean, they, how many games do they have? They have like close they've to got, 10. They've games. got to be close to 10. Yeah, there's a double digit, surely. Yeah. I, I mean, mean there's, there's five in just the main series alone. Yeah. Alternatively, just going with your Halo, we have the, the CGI and like after watching Avengers, which I think we'll talk about later, yeah. seeing Thanos as like an alien style creature yeah. and Gamora Guardians of the Galaxy, that kind of thing. I just think the animation of producing all the creatures that are in yeah, Halo now is, would would they do well now that we just have the technology but it could just be definitely yeah now now is, sight to see. Yeah. Now is definitely the time to be a uh, Yeah. But the thing is they were going to make one. I heard like I think years ago they were going to do one. I think Ridley like is it Ridley Scott or something like that? The director of the, Aliens. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure he w- like one. Of, he was going to do a Halo movie. I mean, if he did to Halo what he did to the Aliens franchise, I'm kind of glad he didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. Are you talking about Prometheus? I am talking about Prometheus. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good either. <laughs> but when you think about it, like you know that bit in Prometheus. I know I'm kind of going off topic, but this is something that has been eating at my brain. She's like the main character. She's a scientist. She's a smart woman. When she's running away from oh, that's the big, debatable. <laughs> she's running away from the big uh, horseshoe ship. Yeah, Why yeah. does she just run to the left? Yeah, um, I believe other channels have referred to it as the uh, the Prometheus school of running away from things. It can't be that hard to just run a different direction. She's not Derek Zoolander. Mm, like true. going left can't be that hard. Yeah. I mean, even he manages it by the end, and he might be like. Where's big one as he can't way, turn right? Though, way, so, uh, way at <laughs> the spectrum. No, you can't turn um, left. You can turn right. You can't no, turn you can only right. turn right. I haven't watched the alien movie. Like right. six days. It's been it's been horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I definitely think that a Halo Halo works works as a video a video game to movie adaptation. Yeah, as long as they stick with the source material, just don't try and fix something that's not broke. Yeah, yeah uh, who would you successful. who would you cast as as Master Chief? Um, Gerard Butler. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, because he's made loads of great films. Yeah, but he's he's just got that. Oh, shut up! But he's just got that. <laughs> I think he's just got that. You don't have to look at him that much, which is good. Yeah. I just think he. I just think he'd do really well. You have got to give him another chance. Surely, eight chances isn't enough. But to be fair, <laughs> I mean, like with Master Chief, 
you, you could really cast anybody in the suit. I think mainly for the voice. Like you, you'd be looking for someone who has a very commanding voice. Heroic. Ron, Ron, Ron Perlman. Oh. Shades of Hellboy. Uh, even Josh Brolin. I mean, he's he's, yeah, he's, he's just done Thanos. He's done Cable. Cable. He's yeah, he's, cable. Yeah. he's definitely big enough. I mean, I would Mus- say muscular wise. He, Josh Brolin confuses me. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> he's he's very muscular, but he's also very he's short. A, yeah, he's he's the he's, definition of uh, of like short and stocky. Short and stocky. He's just solid as fuck. He's wide. I mean, if you wanted to sell <laughs> sell tickets. Uh, surely you just you just cast Dwayne Johnson. See, I mean, you, the guy the guys that are licensed to print money. You're right, but you can't cast him as Master Chief. Yeah. I just can't. You gotta. I would say, honestly, maybe, you, could maybe, cast, maybe, you could cast him as one of the the midget aliens, and I'd pay to go see him. Honestly, you could do the grunts. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I think he's shown that he's actually a pretty talented actor. He's gotten better at acting. But I'm talking. Uh, I'm talking about. I would love to see. Chris Hemsworth. Uh, he's Hemsworth. Because he's got are... that kind of... That is, the voice he has for Thor yeah. that he puts on is very powerful, commanding voice. He's got, obviously got a thunder. Yeah. He's in amazing shape. He's massively jacked. Yeah, amazing. But also, like he's him. shown that he can go a semi-comedic route with Thor Ragnarok. That was, he's hilarious in that. Yeah. But then if you look at the original, just Thor, yeah. he's... Serious acting's still pretty, pretty above par. Yeah. Yeah. Look, he is a he's a he's a good actor. I'll I'll, uh, I'll definitely give you that. Um, will he be, will he be too busy uh, being the new Hulk Hogan in the Hulk Hogan movie? Yeah. Is he actually? He's, he he has cast. he has officially been cast as Hulk Hogan, which is the a sentence I never thought I'd be forced to say out loud. That is. Awesome. Uh, the real question. That's a travesty. Though, How do they cast an Australian as the greatest American ever to live? <laughs> Um, because clearly we're we're better than that. Um, the the real question though, the the question on everyone's lips is uh, is is Chris Hemsworth going to shave himself half bald, um, to play to play Hulk Hogan? Nah, bald cap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed. He's one of those actors that will go all out. But he'll shave his head. I I to be fair, if if I got to pick someone to play me in a movie, I'd probably pick Chris Hemsworth too, even though he also doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably pick. Danny DeVito to play me in a movie. I'd probably just be fast. That sounds, we already look that sounds similar. like I have a really low sense of self worth. Self worth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be correct. And, and, on, and on, the, on that depressing note, we'll, we'll leave that subject behind, shall we? Yeah. Uh, I think if I got to adapt a video game into a movie, it would have to be uh, any any of the Uncharted series. It's it's already cinematic. It's got great characters. It's got character development. It's got good stories, and the internet already know who should play Nathan Drake. It's it's Nathan Fillion. Oh, absolutely. They um, look identical. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the the I think it's a ten to fifteen minute short oh, on the short, YouTube yeah. of yeah, um, yeah. him as Nathan Drake. Uh, I'd be more than happy for uh, cool a Nathan uh, Nathan Drake adventure, Uncharted Five. As a film starring Nathan Fillion. Mm, yeah, um, absolutely. I yeah, I'd friend. love to see that. <laughs> Again, I mean, a... I remember seeing that short. I remember being like sent it, and I remember like, it said like Nathan Fillion is playing as Nathan Drake. I was like, no, oh, God, okay. I was, uh, I'm surprised he actually suits it. Really, for really for well. me, for video game and movie adaptation, it's it's tough because you'd have to edit it slightly, but I don't mind the idea of a post uh, post apocalyptic world. And I could honestly watch a Fallout movie. Fallout the movie, now there's an interesting idea. But they would have to so it's a very survival based game, but they'd have to just throw in an extra dynamic of being outside of a vault like you like mm. World War Z had just the zombies and that's the way they did that spectacular you could do a similar thing but not using zombies, but like there's been a nuclear apocalypse. Do you, and honestly do you, make you so do that as a, uh, as a a horror movie or a, a I think like you, thriller? I think you do it as a thriller, sure. Like you, you got to collect things to survive, so you're gonna you're gonna force them out of the vault. Yeah. To do that anyway, the vault's like a safe haven, but they're all a bit worried, obviously. But I just think you could. There's so story arc wise, yeah. you can do so much with post-apocalyptic worlds that 
it's hit and miss. It could be an amazing movie, or it could just be an absolute. Turd. I I think I think in a, I think in the hands of a good director, it would be fantastic if you yeah. put that in the hands of say Jordan Peele, who is just going on a tear mm. at the moment, making various yeah. horror movies and thrillers and whatnot. I think, or he's, he's doing really he's doing really. I'm really looking forward to his next movie, Us. Yeah, that's, that's, that's looking that. fantastic. Uh, the other director that you could have take the realms is Edgar Wright. The guy has the guy has not gone wrong yet. Yeah, and right. True, true. What with Fallout seventy six, the reliance on Take Me Home, Country Road, as and Edgar Wright's obsession with just cramming fantastic music mm. yeah. into his soundtracks, movies. Soundtracks. They have to be amazing. And he could take uh, what is essentially a bleak setting and, and make it fun. I mean, at, at World's End was about robots murdering an entire village and turning them into robots. Yeah. Mm. They clones of themselves, and he managed to turn that into a, a, a fun and fantastic film. Yeah, there's a couple of routes you could take with um, with the sort of post-apocalyptic style survival. Like, you can... Honestly, you could turn it into a comedy. Mm. You could and turn it, it into it a comedy. Could be, it could be hilarious with people, definitely crazy people you meet along the way. You could turn it into a thriller. It could be a, just a stockpiled action movie, full of. It could honestly, you could you could Mad Max it a bit. You could. That's probably one of my favorite, post-apocalyptic movies. Mad it's Max. such a good style. The original yeah. or the new one with Tom Hardy. Uh, Tom Hardy. Uh, I think Tom, Tom Hardy, Hardy actually. Yeah, he's just such a spec. Going back to your master chip, Tom Hardy would be amazing. He would be. Uh, that's because to, to, Tom, 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 no wrong. Tom yeah. Hardy could be Barbie in the next movie, and I think he'd still do a fantastic job. He's just, he's, for mine, he's one of the best current actors going around. Yeah. It's, uh, it is funny that you brought up post-apocalyptic comedies, though, because there is a movie coming out towards the end of this year that I know for a fact, mm, at least me and Tom are very excited for. Zombie Land the sequel. Yeah. Oh, oh man. It's... Uh, we've waited anything, years for anything... this sequel to be made. Yeah. And with the what's entire called? original cast. So far to Zombie Land 2. Like uh, what's the official name for it? It's like Zombie Land Double Tap or something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as, uh, that's allegedly that's the, the official tagline, poster yeah. hasn't hasn't come out yet. Um with the original cast returning in its entirety. Mm. What do you reckon? I mean is it, is it anything rock rock or bust? It's it's got to be just amazing. I think it's going to be one of the few sequels that's better than the original. I think the original did really well to set things up. I think it was it was almost the, like a superhero origin story. Yeah, I think with yeah. the I think with the finish, you can now that we have the background story of the characters, you can focus more on the zombie style comedy mm. and the zombie movie. It could absolutely just be shocking because. It was, what was originally funny about the first one was getting to know each person and their silly traits and mm. how that amused you. Now that that's kind of gone, because we're very in touch with the characters, they could lose an aspect of the movie that it could just not feel the same. Mm. But it could be, I think it's going to be an absolute smash. I mean, I'm looking forward to it because I want to see where they go with the story. Like, I want to see, like, what's happened. Like, I want to see what's happened with the characters. I want to see how they've progressed over the years. Like, has, like, have, have they found a cure? Or will they go, or like, have they found survivors and have to survive? And, like, there's another threat, like, because in the, like, in an apocalyptic world, humans become a bigger threat because there's no law. Everyone becomes savages. Yeah. That, people are just awful. Yeah, people just, do. Just in general. People and that, that's now, that's not, that's pre-apocalypse. <laughs> uh, it, it's very interesting to see where they go because, obviously, it, there's been a few years since the first one came out, so a time jump is inevitable with, yeah. the, with the, yeah. the cast having aged and... Most of them have gone off and been better, and Woody Harrelson has gone off and just continued to be Woody Harrelson, yeah. which Emma is Stone's just fantastic and everything. Yeah, she's still very attractive. Yeah, and um, it's interesting. Do you think they will uh, ditch the concept of having rules? No. What with the finish of the last film, I think I don't think they and will. With rule the line rules are meant to be broken. Do you think they'll bring that back? I think they'll hammer home rules more so in the second one. But I think it might come from potentially a group setting, mm. so it won't just be. Uh, um, 
just just the just name. the small group of the uh, oh. Jesse Eisenberg's. Uh, yeah, I forgot this character's name. Jesse Eisenberg. Columbus. Columbus. I don't think it will just be Columbus producing the rules. I think it'll be as a whole unit. The group will have rules, mm. and that Woody Harrelson will break all of them throughout the movie. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I'd be more than happy for them to systematically introduce about eleven or twelve rules, and then have them pop up on the screen every single time Woody Harrelson breaks one. Yeah, yeah I um, think Tallahassee is. Probably one of the the most fun characters I've seen in a movie in in a while. Yeah, yeah. I I'm so curious of how his sub story Twinkie search is going to continue because uh, he got does... he got the one, and they're supposed to last a while. But I, I wonder if that's going to be the premise of the entire second movie is the search for a potential stack of Twinkies. Do we do we switch do we switch uh sweet treats? Does the whole movie become what would Woody Harrelson do for a clam dike bar? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think it was that movie that kind of got me on to Twinkies. I've never had one before. That. Uh, they're like, they're atrocious. I'm not gonna lie, they're, they're not, not, uh, not yeah, good I sweets. I'd like to I'd like to meet you. I don't think they're worth dying for Woody Harrelson's style, but I'd definitely buy one if they're around and probably less than a dollar. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I would I would fight through a, a horde of zombies for a, a Jaffa cake, a hobnob. Or a hobnob. Yeah, um, box of hobnobs. I'd fight through. Uh, uh, I'd like a uh, hobnob is a biscuit, by the way. It's a it's a an oak biscuit <laughs> with, a, with a, cho- a digestive biscuit with a, a chocolate topping. They're the best biscuit uh, known to man. Uh, will, perfect. I will fight anybody. What we will say otherwise. is, uh, is you about a Kit Kat? It's T. <laughs> yeah, sh- shut it's up. T, it's T score is a perfect ten. Um, you dunk it. It softens. It does not crumble. The perfect biscuit. For two English guys that only drink tea. Uh, well, also a <laughs> it, subhuman. I do of understand that for audiences at home listening now, that the phrase two Englishmen is probably not, not really going to slide. We are English. We have lived in Australia for 15 years, and that's why the accent is gone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I could put one on and chat. No, I'm not he, he, can't, he can't put one on. <laughs> He's an Englishman who can't do the English accent, which is um, embarrassing and somewhat hilarious. Yeah, but I'm super white, so it makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> that like is to, true. I'm like the to, only one out of all of us who's act, like I, I'm a full on Aussie. Bogan. I'm not not Bogan. <laughs> by the way, if I'm joking. I if I he had a choice, I would get the Southern Cross tattooed on my back. We're on a, Okay, we're on a bit. And of a you're trying to argue that you're not a Bogan. He has a good point. We are. Bit, we I, are have a, a I have a question to propose. We're going to swing it around. Yeah, man. What movie do you think would be a successful video game switching the role? Like, what can you see? Working in a video game setting, story arc wise, like okay, had a, a movie that has not already at some point been turned into a video game, or if it's a, if it's been turned into a video game, it's awful. I'm happy for you to bring that up and we'll tear it apart a little bit. But I like to see movies that you think cinematically worked really well, but could be potentially a, a great storytelling game. Uh, yeah. Boot Boot Knock Saints. Uh, I've I've spoken to you guys That's about this movie before. I I. I loved the idea of this movie, and yeah, it's very Hitman. I can see that being a uh, almost like Hitman co-op, like a yeah. like a, a way out yeah. style. Mm. Um, you have to work together to to kill the targets in a stealthy and a sneaky sneaky way. I think it would work really well. Yeah, uh, you the story in games like that, you don't really need one. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a bit, and I'm gonna say it, it's already it was made a long time ago. The Predator game, yes, from um, PS2. Yeah, there have been a few good and a few bad yeah. um, Predator and Alien games for that. Did you play the recent Alien vs Predator game? Alien like that was on versus PS2? Predator. No, because I, I have played the Alien game where you have to sneak around a ship and avoid the alien. It's that that game okay. It's okay. It's it's you can cheat you can cheat the system by taking the longest way around to do anything, mm. knowing full well that you're guaranteed not to get killed by anything. Yeah. Okay. With the rise of battle royale style games, I'm gonna go with a really cheap, definite win, and the Hunger Games would absolutely smash it. So that's that's funny because I the Hunger Games basically so, started the battle royale phrase. Well, I have yeah. a couple. Yeah. I have a couple. I know Hunger Games is a cheap out because it's already successful. Yeah. It'll just be throwing the official name on it. Um, but I know there's there's almost definitely been games made of this movie. I just think 
with the right, maybe a uh, sort of telltale style gameplay. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Uh, a telltale Sherlock Holmes game would be, um, be fantastic. Um, the the problem with that being that, that there is <laughs> there is no telltale anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know. But the, I, I, the, style. the style game works. I mean, there are there are companies now currently finishing off The Walking Dead, the yeah. final season. Yeah, uh, sure. I think episode three went live a couple weeks ago. two, three weeks ago. Yeah. So pretty keen for that. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a, a good Did you ever play choice. the Telltale game, of, like the Batman Telltale <laughs> game? I did. The story was the story was good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The, uh, it was yeah. very glitchy. It was um, which is weird because it was it was nowhere near the first, the first Telltale game they've done. It's just I think there are a few. I don't know. You could tell that the company was stretched and towards the end of its life, which is which is sad. Yeah, really, because the the games will be missed. Hmm. Um, having said that, there are there are whilst video game adaptations of movies have not been great, there has been one game. At least that is the reverse, where the movie was terrible but the video game was fantastic. Uh, X Men Origins Wolverine. I don't know if any of you have played that video game. I played it, the video it, game, but it, I really wish I didn't see almost, it. It almost makes up for the, the, wrong, that movie was better than the movie. car crash that was X Men <laughs> yeah. Origins Wolverine. I prefer this Deadpool. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tom's not going to be invited back next week. No, no, obviously that is probably. Have you seen I the behind the scenes? Have you seen the behind the scenes of like the directors and the set and like the on set designers and, and they like, all and they all try to BS their way out of making that like justified that's why they unless it's a twenty five minute apology I don't I don't care what they have to say Are they like, all you the, like you hear the director like you hear the director and like the and like the set and like the designers of like the character they all say it's like. Yeah, yeah, we gave uh, yeah we we gave them all these different powers because like we wanted to change up Deadpool. Why? Why change? Deadpool? I think the worst part of that movie is its potential was through the roof, and God did they screw it up. I love Sabretooth in that movie though. Sabretooth was my. Liev Schreiber is a, a fantastic actor, and he I was the he only was... positive in that film. And Hugh Jackman's in it playing a character that we all fell in love with, yeah. and still he managed they managed to take a character that. We all already loved, and could have done pretty much whatever they wanted, and they made him wooden and boring. I think the issue also, like Sabretooth, although it's really good, if you go back to the original X Men, they do not even look close to similar. Yeah, but yeah, but that is, 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 is like, that a good? Is that a good thing? I mean, the the Sabretooth in the X Men, um, whilst being himself, didn't speak. Or do anything. No, or... Yeah, he just growled. You're right. You're not. You're not wrong. But the issue is, with Origins got it so wrong because they just showed him growing up to look the same for so many years. Yeah. And it's supposed to be canon, and then why in the space of five, ten years does he look completely different? And it's been alive for hundred and looked identical the whole way through. It's just a continuality. Continuation uh, issue. Yeah, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. The the advantage of uh, the X Men franchise at this point is, uh, if you've seen Days of Future Past, time travel. If yep. there is a continuity error in any of that, they just go, it was time travel. Yeah, which is the, uh, just it's it's. We call it the time turnities. That's what I call it. The time turnities. Where so they get everything wrong and they just tease a little time turner in there, like uh, Harry Potter, just whoop, back that up, time turner, oh, we're all good. Ah, another fantastic segue. Speaking of time travel, is that going to be a major factor in uh, Avengers Endgame? Ooh, that's a good, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, uh, I believe that the uh, the basis of this this conversation is uh, I had the advantage of having watched uh, Infinity War, not last night but the night before. Mm. Uh, there is the scene when the children of Thanos come to Earth, and you see uh, right right at the very beginning in uh, Iron Man. And Doctor Strange battle, battle them. Yeah. Uh, when Spider Man shows up and he catches the giant hammer, uh, when Tony Stark asks, "Where have you come from?" Spider Man says, "I've come from the future." <laughs> um, which I didn't realize the first couple of times I watched it. He actually says, I- "I've come from the future," and then gets and gets hit by by some metal. So uh, 
I believe that is where the, the major, and with time travel being hinted at in Airman and the Wasp, it almost seems guaranteed at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it could just be a massive misdirection. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for uh, uh, expectation subversion. I, I love that. Yeah. Alternatively... I also uh, hate time travel. So. Yeah. <laughs> I love time travel. Like it dead? sucks in a movie, but I love time travel. You yes. like he dead? Just sorry, cut you off completely. No, it's all good, man. Um, yeah, no, he's dead. Yes. <laughs> he's dead, you all agree? Yeah. yeah. A massive fan theory on the web right now that just says, probably, that says he's he's the Hulk. That's why he gets his, his absolute ass whooped by Thanos in the first one. Doesn't even put up anything. Gets beat to shreds, kicked out, and then that's why Bruce Banner, when he lands on Earth, because yeah. like, he can just turn into who he wants. That's why Bruce Banner never becomes the oh. Hulk. And I know that the, the shutdown of that is when Bruce Banner by himself is talking to the Hulk to kick him out. But that could be just director's ploy. Could just be really good writing. Yeah, another just another case of misdirection. Misdirection. And it could be Loki, which would I'd be I'd be okay with that. I wouldn't I'd kinda like to see him at Officially die because mm. I've been so upset so many times. Um, but then alternatively, that just makes Thanos v the Hulk round two so much more exciting mm. because you know that if Loki's alive, that Hulk and Thanos haven't actually fought yet. And Hulk is very, very much so the sort of well versed and well matched yeah. with Thanos when it's it comes to just. Power, like and strength. And speaking of the ability. Hulk, speaking of the Hulk, apparently there's a bit of theory going around because in like all the, like the concept art that's been coming out, all the leaked concept art, like how they all have like their own armor now, like the uh, end game armor. And then you see Hulk wearing the purple, like wearing the, the purple armor, like the white and purple armor. Everyone is saying, like, oh my god, it's Professor Hulk. And I'm like, is it? That, that'd be cool to see Professor Hulk. I don't know whether that works on a cinematic scale. Um, I just I just think that the dynamic they they did say that because they they didn't think a, a Hulk movie would would sell that they were going to do a three movie Hulk arc this would be the end of that arc mm. set up in Ragnarok okay. and then the uh, the so you've got Hulk refusing to let Bruce take over mm. in Ragnarok and then in Infinity War you've got Hulk refusing to take over Banner, yeah. which is, and then in Endgame you'll see the two of them finally coexist. come together, coexist. Mm. Um, so I guess in the, in that in that perspective, yes, mm. Professor Hulk makes sense. Yeah. Um, and they yeah. also said that Professor Hulk and Rocket may because they're both geniuses. Like Rocket is like a technical genius, and Professor Hulk will. Ultimately, be a genius. Well, I'm not saying that he, he like Professor Hulk is actually going to show up, but it would be so cool to see Rocket and Professor Hulk like working in a lab together. Banner and Rocket are two of the smartest characters you see on screen in any in the entire franchise. Yeah. The only issue is, yeah, Banner's Banner's a genius, but has never done anything close to what Rocket can do with his eyes closed, bare hands, backwards, create a bomb out of stuff he finds in the spaceship. Mm. Like, Banner's smart, knows what he's doing. I know that since Ragnarok, he's picked up all this sort of knowledge just from being... In space. Yeah, in space. But Rocket, Rocket's a super space genius on Earth. That's like 40 times Tony Stark. Yeah. Like Tony Stark... Has only ever used materials based on Earth, except that one time he sort of created his own shit. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's from Earth, only ever been on Earth. Yeah. So until Infinity War, when he's looking at stuff on Titan. We'll get to that later. Um, but Rocket's so far ahead that he's got to be a major factor in this movie. I think he will me, be. That's why he didn't get cleaned up by the snap. Yeah, he would. He would... He's going to have a massive impact. It makes sense, seeing as him and, I'm going to say Ant-Man, are the only real members left that aren't part of the original Avengers team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nebula, which means that the only three 
three people outside of that group are geniuses, essentially. Like, yeah, you're right. Did well, did um, calling a man a genius? I mean, he's, yeah, he's not maybe idiot. not a genius, but he definitely he possess he possesses a significant amount of knowledge that none of the other Avengers have even actually, heard of before. I would actually argue his knowledge is one that is even unknown by Nebula and Rocket because they're thinking big all the time. This is the complete opposite of going as small as possible to collect... Well, put, do... He's collecting stuff to heal. Yeah, yeah is a, well, like that's, well, that's well, the well do they refer to it as a heal, healing particles? Yeah, yeah healing, healing particles. particles. And that's and, why she's uh, alive for so long. And she also yeah. says, uh, stay away from the, the time it's, vortex. Yeah, um, I feel like time travel is going to be... Which uh, um, uh, is stolen from Doctor Who. That's a that's also a time vortex. Um, Doctor Who? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, David Tennant. Tennant. Always David Tennant. That's me. Uh, I'll fight me. Always going to be something else, though. Right, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I see what you mean. There's a lot of potential. I mean, it's it it's Marvel, and they they even their, their biggest misses have been hits. Um, which is that, which is saying Elf something. Uh, hey, it uh, wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was Dark World. Dark, Dark World, World. Thor: The Dark World, which wasn't as good, but it still wasn't uh, complete trash. Like I'll watch it again. Yeah. Oh, I am. That's, <laughs> no, so that's no, got no. nothing to do with my no. movie tastes. No. Um, so I would say, is this is this the most anticipated movie of the year? Endgame. Or is it not? Is is the most anticipated movie of the year? In fact, Star Wars. I knew you were going to make that segue into Star Wars. I, 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 will, I will never find, I will never not find a segue to Star Wars. So I've, I've spoken to both of you about this outside of podcast material. Yes, rather, rather extensively. But my issue is I'm more excited for, for Endgame purely because I have no personal preference on how this goes down. I just want to see a good movie. Yeah. Whereas when I look at Star Wars, I'm so entranced in the yeah. entirety of the series, mm. the originals, the prequels, now the sequels. And, and spin-offs, just, don't forget the spin-offs. And the spin-offs. I've watched all of them. I, this was so much more to me than just a movie. This yeah. is sort of make or break, because the last one I thought was good, but it's very heavily reliant on this one making that one make sense. Yeah. So this, I'm more scared for Star Wars because I don't want it to sort of, not ruin, ruin is a very harsh word to use, but sort of maybe put a smudge on just the absolute love I have for this franchise. Yeah. yeah Whereas I, Marvel, Marvel, if this is all goes strong and is all cool, you've got the comic books. The comic books are there first. That's the original source material. Star Wars has comic books branching off. It's it's very heavily movie reliant. If the movies do well, the comic books do well. They sell well. Everything. Whereas Marvel, Marvel's Marvel. Everyone's going to watch it. It's probably going to be good anyway because they don't really do much wrong. Yeah. Star Wars. I saw me more to answer your question. I'm more excited for Marvel, and I'm just bloody nervous for Star Wars. I'm I'm excited for I, I'm I'm very excited for Star Wars Episode Nine. Just wish that we'd see a trailer, or at least a teaser trailer. May the fourth, mate. May the fourth. May the fourth. I, I so do think away. that 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 would make the most sense. Coming out on May the fourth. Uh, coming out on May the fourth at Star Wars Celebration, it seems like yeah, it didn't come out. Soon. It didn't come out at Disney X, so I yeah. I'd say mate, it's got to be Star Wars Celebration. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Seven episode, seven right? months before, roughly. Seven or eight months before That's the enough time release, to it's it's enough, but not too much time to hype. Yeah. And uh, with JJ Abrams taking over, back over as a director, I've I've got faith, but I'm still yeah, there. I, I can't. It would have to do something truly, truly just despicable to make me hate this movie. Yeah. I mean, the force will be a lie now. Um. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> if if it turned out to be um. Uh, Macaulay Culkin's fever dream. Uh, I think that might that might that might be enough to do it. Macaulay Culkin's fever. Uh, if at the end of That's episode good. nine, it's just a hallucination from uh, the Ranch. Bray Parker wakes up in his bed with a, a throbbing hard on. I think that'd probably ruin it as well. 
I'm seeing as he's still not got over the fact that he played Darth Maul in 1999. And that was, like, uh, that was 20 years he was, ago. He was good like, at that, and he was good in Solo for the 20 seconds he was on screen. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Also, so mad Solo didn't do absolutely spectacular, because it was arguably top three Star Wars movies to come out. Yeah. I think just because the character of Han Solo, you can do so much, he's spectacular. I'm gonna go and see that. I'm gonna go and see Solo. When I I saw Solo when I was in, I think Queensland. I'm pretty sure. No, I was in Perth. What am I talking about? I was in Perth. <laughs> I was. I saw um, me and a couple other people. We just went to go see it at like late at night. And I remember sitting there at like at the end of the movie when she starts talking to Maul. Because Darth Maul is one of my favorite characters. Like he's one of my. He's like one Ray of my Park's favorite characters. Yeah. Rocky's Ray Park's only shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then when I saw Ray Park on screen, and when I saw Maul on screen, I just absolutely lost it. That was the first, that was the only time in a Star Wars movie where I went yes and stood up and lost my absolute. Can I swear on this? I can't swear on this guy. I mean, he's been swearing in most of the entire time. So right, yeah, I lost I'm my shit. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> yeah, he is. You're, you're a hooligan and you're causing shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. he's an absolute scum. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we are we are more or less at the end of our time. Uh, yeah. We've gone vastly over our initial twenty minute estimate. Uh, we are currently sat at forty one minutes. Oh my God. In well, case any of you were wondering whether or not we could talk, I was actually wondering how hour. long that we can go on for. Well, to, feel be, like to be fair, we we did come in with the intention of talking about video game movies, and we just spent the last ten minutes talking about Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that that will happen most podcasts. Uh, so I would say last last question on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. How excited are we for uh, Star Wars: Fallen Jedi? Um, are we, do we remain? Uh, that's a, the game uh, that's a, coming out. Yeah. Isn't it? Do we do we remain cautiously optimistic? I'm excited for it because I know I I've known that this game has been coming out for a while. Just have like, but I forgot about it until I saw like a notification the other day. Um. I any Star Wars game, I'm thinking for. Yeah, that's that's except that's, for the pod racing. That's game. fair. So out, out of ten, you're a seven, ten, or an eight. Uh, about a seven. So yeah. uh, t- Tom, I am. Um, I'm a five. I know that's spectacularly low for such a massive Star Wars game, um, but just because you really have to do everything right with this franchise, otherwise it's not going to do well because. The fans are just ruthless, and I understand that you can't you can't be perfect every time, but you really have to do the right thing by Star Wars fans. So in making the video game, it has to hit every note. It has to be perfect, otherwise it will just cop criticism after criticism after criticism. But, yeah, yeah um, you're right. So, so I'm I'm look I'm excited for the game. But I'm not excited for the inevitable backlash of oh, I mean, fans doing. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I'm of course. I'm on your side. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a five. Um, I think it's a good concept. I think it has the potential to be a great game. Uh, it is also an EA game, and their track record for the <laughs> last two has not been not been fantastic. They do have a habit of trying to squeeze every last every last penny out of us, and I don't want to pay. Five hundred extra dollars to get a purple lightsaber at some point. I mean, I just I don't I don't see it. No matter how good it is, it's never going to be Pegel, is it? Uh, <laughs> I saw know, that you were Pegel. playing it as we were finishing up the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um. So on, on that note, I will we'll end on this section every week. It is our our movie of the week, mm-hmm. and I would say with the uh, the Captain Marvel either upcoming or having just been released as of posting of this podcast. Mm. Um, Captain America, the first Avenger. It is the uh, the the best. I would say the best Marvel oh, origin yeah. story, as far as the MCU is uh, is involved. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, oh, look, I want to say yes. Of course, you'll argue with me. But I just fell in love with Cardi as the galaxy, and you can't say that's not an origin story. No, I I do see where you're coming from. So it, it's I it's agree, fun. I agree. Look, I agree with you. It is probably. The original Avenger, is yeah. Captain America, but I just had so much fun with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, look, Guardians of the Galaxy, and I can't agree with the other. 
is it, it is related. I can see one true. thing about no. the Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's the end of our podcast today. Thanks for listening. You're, You're a guest. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, if I can say one thing about the Guardians of the Galaxy is that the soundtrack is amazing. I love the soundtrack. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a... It's a um, yeah. I love 80s music. Uh, wait, do I, do I get to hashtag? Hashtag bring back James Gunn. All right. Hashtag yeah. gun, gunning for president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent with this. Um, go and watch Captain America: The First Avenger. Treat yourself, Treat yourself. as they say. Yeah. And uh, it's it's been it's been real. It's been yeah. real. It, it, it's been real talk. Thanks for having me. Culture discussions. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, anytime. Yeah, um, except except when we don't want you. Tuesday next week. Um, Same again. <laughs> it's it's it is a Tuesday. No, it's not. It's, not Tuesday. it's a Tuesday. You guys don't need to know that. All right. It's been real. It's been real. Real talk.